The problem that I have with how most goals are set is that the timeline is usually very unrealistic, especially when I see people set business goals. By the end of this year, my business is going to be, you know, this successful and I'm going to have this many clients. And then I said, well, how many do you have now? <laughs> and it's way, way less. And oftentimes they uh, set those goals, uh, you know, it, when they're applying to my group coaching program, for example. And uh, you know, this is, by the way, not not talking about any one particular one. I, I see this as a pattern for many of the applications to my program. Um, and they maybe even think I have some kind of magic that I'm going to be able to sprinkle on on their actions that, uh, oh, by joining George's program, I'm going to learn all this stuff. I'm going to be able to have support and community. And therefore, I'm able to go from you know the, the, the zero or you know few clients I have now to suddenly a full business by the end of the year. And I'm going to be, you know, so disciplined and I'm going to be creating content consistently. Like, oh, are you doing that now? No, no, no way. And so there is nothing wrong with having great ambitions and uh, exciting, you know, dreams and goals. The problem comes in with the timeline. The timeline is what makes us either be fantasizing or to get into wrongdoing. So what I mean is you can have a, a dream of having a full-time business and, um, you know, so that's like sort of an external outcome of, I have many clients who, you know, I have a waiting list of clients. And, and you can also have a goal of like an internal outcome of, oh, I am now really consistent about creating content and I, I'm showing up on a, you know, um, I'm showing up, you know, regularly and I'm organized and all those are, in, those are, that's an internal outcome. You can have those dreams, but though, how do you know how long it'll take you to get there? Right? Like most people say, well, end of the year, that sounds like a long time. If you're at the beginning of the year, or if you're at the end of the year, no, oh, the end, the middle of next year or something like that. It sounds like a long time, but the the what's missed by most of us is the subtleness of long-term growth like like all these outcomes whether it's external outcomes of having a full business and successful you know or the in, which usually requires internal outcomes of being more disciplined and organized and overcoming of your limitations um that requires different amounts of time for different people. And almost always it requires much longer than what people expect, even when they have my mentorship and the support that I create within a community of clients, et cetera. It's still, people realize, oh, if I would have, if I, if I already had the capacity to do that, I would have done it already. And to get to that kind of business means I have to actually change a lot. I have to be way more organized. I have to be way more better at boundaries with others, people, and with myself. I have to be way less uh, doubtful of my own creations and just you know publish things when they're way less perfect than I would want them to be. Um, and so this this like actual result that you want um, takes so much change of yourself that you don't realize that this this change isn't usually fun to make and this is where joyful productivity comes in because it's like the changes you have to make are are things like i don't feel like for example right before i may start making this video i was taking a nap and today i had some personal you know some important personal errands to run that my schedule today was completely different than and then I had originally intended. And um, I was taking a long nap and I'm like, oh, but maybe I should just skip this week's video. I don't feel like making it, but you know what? I'm going to start the recording anyway. And those of you who are watching the Facebook live know that I had did a missed take. And then I, you know, those watching YouTube didn't get the missed take in the beginning, but it doesn't matter. So it's like, there's so much of doing what we don't feel like doing 
and therefore stretching into the kind of person that is required for actual long-term success. And it's not, and so that kind of stretching um, can either be avoided, which is what most, most people do. Perhaps you know, you've noticed yourself doing a lot of the avoiding of the stretching, or they are suffering while they're doing it. And my take on this is that it's not going to be fun. And a normal, your, your current consciousness won't find it fun. It probably will find it painful or suffering. However, if you understand that there that the that the below all of this work is the real work of personal growth and the joy of becoming a better person essentially, then you might try to build some playfulness, curiosity, uh, and even, might I say, deep joy into the activity. And by doing so, you realize, oh, maybe the timeline of me trying to get a full, all my client, you know, full, full time with clients to get, make enough money to be organized enough to show up. Maybe the timeline of me getting there doesn't matter as much as I thought. Like, oh, I thought I was going to do that by the end of this year. Oh, I'm not making enough progress, whatever. Maybe that timeline was unrealistic. And instead, you should just focus on stretching yourself today. Like right now, you don't feel like doing this. You don't feel like starting your video. You don't feel like publishing this. You don't feel like whatever you don't feel like doing. That's my whole day. Did you know that? Like, oh my God, George, really? You, your whole day, you're suffering? No, I'm not suffering. Because I've already reframed all of this as a deeper joy of stretching myself. And it's like, what, it's like you just need a little bit of stretching. And then you're like, oh, that actually feels pretty good. So for example, I didn't feel like, I really didn't feel like starting this video. I really didn't. I wanted to keep sleeping. And I, I'm like kind of foggy headed today and not in the right, like it's completely not related to what I wrote for this blog post. Doesn't matter. Some of you are reading the blog post like, what? What is he talking about? Right. Um, but I stretched myself anyway. And now uh, 10 minutes into the video, I'm, I'm kind of having fun with you, right? <laughs> kind of. And now I actually have to look at my, my notes to see what the heck I was trying to say. No, but but you see what I mean? Like like the, in other words, um, it's okay to have ambitions and goals, but just understand that the process there is not going to be fun. Whoever told you getting there is fun, they're either lying to you, number one, or number two, they've never done it themselves, or they've forgotten what it's like to get there. Or number three, they're talking on a more cryptic level or deeper level what fun means. They mean spiritually fun, <laughs> deeper joy of eternal connection with soul. That's not about right now. I don't feel like doing this. I really don't. I don't want to, whatever it is you're doing, I don't want to be writing. I don't want to be planning this technology so hard to figure out. I'm so frustrated right now. I don't Yo, know, people are gonna think I'm a fool, whatever. It's not, it's not fun. It's not, not, not at this level of consciousness, but at some kind of higher level of consciousness, it is fun. This life is fun, even though it's full of suffering, as you probably know. But this life is fun because we're playing an avatar. Anyway, so so in other words, when you have what I believe to be a truly productive view of your goals a joyful productivity mindset you don't care about the timeline you don't say well i don't i you know i'm i'm falling behind or i'm not there yet or oh i got to um i got to make sure i make this next launch successful or whatever it's like i have let go of timelines um so long ago which allows me to still be here working so consistently which ironically, allows me to be more successful than a lot of other people who are so focused or not, they don't even realize, like a lot, a lot, a lot of you watching this don't even realize that you're, they're attached to this timeline of when are you going to have all your clients? When? Did you think it's going to happen by the end of the year? It might not. It might be another 10 years. Sorry. It might be, it might be six months. I don't know. I really don't. But if you're, the timeline is, let's like get rid of it, you know? But what we should do, it's like, I get, I get rid of the longer term, like success timeline, 
And then, but I care so much about my schedule today. And this is what, this is the opposite of what most of us, most of you are doing. Like you, you, you have this vision of a long, longer term time. Oh, I'm going to even, like I said, by joining George's program, I'll have a full-time client load by the end of the year, whatever timeline you have. And then you don't follow your schedule today because someone needs you, because you don't feel good, because you uh, were checking emails and went too long, because you're surfing social. Like, that's what I care about. I care about following today's schedule. And I care about showing up no matter how much of a fool I make of myself, whether it's on live video like this or whether it's, you know, writing and publishing something. You're like, yeah, they, oh, that sales page wasn't really that good, but whatever. I'm committed to publishing the sales page today. And if I get zero sales, I get zero sales. You see how like it still comes back to this idea of being unattached to results, but being so attached to the fact that I follow my schedule today. Like I'm really attached to that. And yes, if I know a lot of you have a hard time following your schedule, I know that. And I also hear a lot of you uh, and I'm sorry if, if this is a dig at, at any of you, but I don't mean it that way. A lot of you, a lot of people I work with are so smart, yourself included. You're, you're so brilliant. And you think, no, George's scheduling is not, is not meant for me. He's a different kind of person. Really? Did you, do you know my background, how undisciplined I was most of my life and how much I was a hippie, you know, like flower child most of my life? I hated discipline. I hated regularity and consistency. Oh, George is different. He's, somehow he's different. Maybe because he's Asian or something. And then there's some racism there, but <laughs> un unspoken racism. But whatever. It's like, it's, he's different. Maybe he's a man and I'm a woman. And therefore there's different. It's like my, 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 a lot of my people I work with are so brilliant that they come up with reasons why, you know, the, therefore the linear schedule isn't meant for me because I'm more spiritual or I'm more, I have a different human design or I have a different astrology chart than George or I have a different whatever, different personality type, pick your personality type. And so this, I'm, I'm different. And so therefore whatever I have to find, and then they never find a way. It's like they still, sorry, again, I don't want to criticize any particular person because what, what I'm criticizing is many, 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 many people I've worked with over the years and haven't worked with, I've just heard, you know, it's like, like you all, it's not you all, but so many people, like, they just, they say, well, because I'm different. And so I can't follow. And like, there's, so therefore, how, what are you, is your, was what you're doing working? And did you think that somehow it was supposed to be fun and not, not stretching? Like, do you think that you're supposed to just go with your own intuition today and and you you can't follow the schedule because somehow you're it's like i would love to know how that works i would love to see someone who has been able to build a successful business in a very calm joyful way which i think i i have i have a successful i mean if you looked at my schedule those people who are in my program like George, how the heck do you do it you run so many calls per week you and okay fine i don't have kids that's how i do it <laughs> okay, maybe that's it. I don't have kids. I don't think I have a chronic illness, although I'm sure if someone diagnosed me like George, you do have a chronic illness because you have to nap four times a day to feel normal. That's not normal, right? Like, like I don't know. But um, and I have other distractions in my life, right? Like, like, you know, and and maybe the reason I have less distractions, it seems like, is because I have done the work of keeping really good boundaries with my family and with my friends and with my life, right? It's like but that's all the stretching that I'm talking about here. That is all the stretching. And so essentially, I, what I want, what, what I hope for all of you is to hold loosely or to just destroy the longer term timeline of what you're supposed to achieve by the end of the year. You know, it's like, play with it, fine. Let it, let it inform what your schedule is today, you know? And then, yes, I always still talk about, you know, productivity stamina. You probably shouldn't create a, ske a full schedule today if you've never, you've never followed your schedule ever because you're, you're a hippie flower child like I used to be and like many of you watching this are. You don't follow schedule. You're, you're, you're spiritual. You're intuitive. You're special. I get it. But still, how, how then do you succeed? I genuinely don't understand it. <laughs> um, and so 
it's like at some point you kind of have to design some kind of schedule that works for you, stepping gradually into it. You don't start with a full schedule. You don't have the stamina for it yet. You have to gradually step into it. But but then, um, then, then you have to be willing to see how slow the growth is at first and say, I can't notice that I'm, my business is improving. I, I don't notice it, but I noticed that I showed up, I published the post on social media, you know, didn't get any likes, um, but I just showed up the next day and I did it again. Didn't get, I got one like the next day and the next week I got two likes, <laughs> you know, it's like the subtleness of long-term growth is so painfully slow that if you, kept to a timeline of your goals, you would be discouraged and desperate and say that you're behind and compare yourself to other people. But if you instead say, ah, all I care about is that I follow my plans today, whatever your plans are, you don't have to follow my sketch, obviously. Your, your plan could be completely different looking than my plans. But what I'm talking about is just your ability to plan your day and to follow your day, whatever that means for you, therefore setting boundaries with your family, with your children, with your parents, with your loved ones, with yourself, most importantly. And setting those boundaries and actually following them is the secret to success. And like to, to, to show up day after day after day after day after day after day. Like I need to remind you, perhaps you may, those of you who have heard my story, I, I didn't start creating content consistently until about 2014, 2014. I started for the first time creating content, putting it out there consistently, 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 day after day after day. I started daily, basically. And then eventually three times a week, if that's two times a week. And, you know. But it wasn't for two and a half years so I don't know if you're willing to wait that long. If you're not willing to wait that long, what are you going to do? What's your alternative? To hustle, to use manipulative marketing, which will get you results sooner. It's true. But then it doesn't get you long-term results because you don't really have an audience after that, right? Like it's, I've tried all this before too, but it's like, you, you, I took me, it took me two and a half years of showing up consistently before I had a full-time client load. Now, I don't know at what point, like, it became full time. I just noticed after two and a half years, I noticed it. Oh, I have a waiting list now and I barely have to market myself. I don't have to sell much. I just gently announce the things I have going on here and there. I let go of the results, whether they're sales or not. I let that go. But I'm, I'm every single you know, week, as you can see, and several times a week, usually I show up with content and every single month. I'm launching something. You notice that, right? Every single month, I'm launching the next course or my group programs or, or you know, when I used to take one-to-one -one clients, I would announce it every month. I just do it consistently. Sometimes, some months, no, no sales. Ah, let it go. Next month, I'm back. But it's like, the more you are attached to, well, this was supposed to work, the, the less you will show up consistently because you thought it was supposed to work right now because some marketing coach told you, oh, Follow this formula. It's supposed to work. No, it, it may or may not work. If you get zero sales, you should show up next month and make a sale, make a make a launch anyway. And how do you do that? It's because you don't care about the results. I don't care about the results. I care about whether I follow my schedule today, whether I did this video and my video needs to be ended because it's almost 20 minutes. And that's all I care. I, I don't think this was a good video. Please do not like this video. You don't honestly have to. I'm going to upload this anyway. You see what I mean? Like It's got to be this regular. It's got to be this regular. And I don't care that this video is going to have few. Honestly, I'm, I'm being serious. Don't like this video if you don't think this is better than my other ones, right? Like, or if you don't think this is better than the other videos you watch, do not like this because it sends me the wrong signal. Also, when I look at the stats, the stats are important to me. Oh, this one was good. Okay, do more stuff like that. But it doesn't matter to me whether this video gets zero likes or zero comments. I just come back the next Friday and do it again. And <laughs> it's got to be that regular. You just follow your schedule. I don't care about the results. But the, the irony is if I just keep following my schedule day after day after day, week after week, the whole time underlying this whole thing is joyful productivity. 
It's just a spiritual practice. The whole thing is a spiritual practice. I'm just practicing stretching out of my comfort zone, being in connection with the divine, trusting the divine, <laughs> surrendering to the divine. The results, I, God, it's up to you. I'm just trying to worship you, dear God, you know, or you know, worship the worship your heart, not worship, whatever word you want to use, but but to dedicate yourself to your to your mission and to your values, to dedicate yourself. That's that you might say worship is, is that. To dedicate yourself to your potent, your higher potential and to show up. And the whole thing is spiritual practice. The results, somehow they always take care of themselves. They really do. I mean, you're still here. You're still able to feed yourself this month. I'm pretty sure you're still able to pay for your rent this month. And somehow magically next month, it will be the case as well. Even if you're not very good at making money, somehow next month it'll work out. Trust me. I don't know how it works, but it just does. So I hope this is encouraging. A weird video, but anyway, um, some ramblings from post post deep nap, and uh, I I genuinely wish you more joyful consistency in showing up, knowing it's just a spiritual practice. The results will take care of themselves. The timeline will take care of itself. But do show up today and follow your plans, whatever your plans are. All right, be well. See you next time.